What is up guys? This is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to show you 10 of my most used apps for the Google Pixel. First up we have MacroDroid and this is by far my favourite automation app for Android. This allows you to download community built macros and it also allows you to build your own. Compared to all the other automation apps that I've tried, this is by far the easiest to use. One of my favorite macros is this torch macro, which means you can just shake your phone when the screen is on and it'll automatically turn on the torch. But the amazing thing with this is that it only works when you're in the dark. And if you then move back into the light, your phone will automatically turn off the torch for you. And another favorite will automatically take a selfie of anyone who tries to unlock your phone and gets the code wrong and will email you that picture. And then as a final example, I have a module which means I can just reject a call by turning my phone face down and placing it on the table. If you do want to take greater control of your phone, then MacroDroid is definitely worth the download. We all like web browsing on our phone, right? And what if you could get the quickest experience possible? Well, this is where Chrome Canary comes in. This is the alpha bleeding edge build of Google's Chrome browser. And this is by far the fastest browsing experience I've had with an Android phone. Granted, this is a lot down to the pixel because it's just blazing, blazing fast. But Chrome Canary is even faster than the beta build and it has even more features. Next on this list, we have Dingless. And this is an app that does one thing, but does it fantastically well. This solves a really old problem, which is when you get notifications or vibrations on your phone when you're already looking at it. Obviously, the point of a notification or a vibration alert is to alert you to the fact that you've got a message. But if you're holding your phone, you know that anyway. So Dingless will automatically turn off your vibrations and your notifications when you're holding your phone. Then as soon as you put your phone down, your notification sounds will be restored and you'll get them as normal. Solid Explorer has for a long time been my favorite Android file manager. It has pretty much every single feature you could need out of a file manager. It's got a built-in extraction manager, so this is really useful if you use a lot of ROMs or you're doing a lot of emulating on your phone. And this split screen mode is one of my favorite features. This lets you drag and drop, copy and paste, and move stuff across from one directory to another. Another cool thing that Solid Explorer does is it integrates really nicely with OTG devices. So here I have my Pixel OTG adapter, which came in the box, and I've just plugged a USB stick into it. And then using Solid Explorer, you can really easily play or copy and paste content from your memory stick onto your phone. Next up, we have my favorite Twitter app, which is Fenix. The interface is just buttery, buttery smooth, and I think the whole thing looks really pretty. It also has a built-in GIF engine, which will allow you to pull GIFs from all over the internet and insert them into tweets. And attaching other media is really easy as well. The whole app is material designed, which gives you really easy access to all of your different sections, like mentions, activity, messages, and likes. And it will show you trends, not just around the world, but also the ones that are local and relevant to you. One of the best features about the Google Pixel is the camera. However, this doesn't mean you're always going to get the perfect photo and it doesn't mean that you're not going to want to edit it slightly. The interface is really easy to use. You choose which tool or filter you want to apply to your photo. You can then scroll up and down and this will pull out all the different things you can edit. So like brightness and contrast or saturation. And then if you scroll left to right, this will change the intensity of the effect. If you tap at the top of the screen, you can get a list of all of the different edits you've applied to an image, and then you can individually tweak these or delete them as you see fit. This makes it really easy to undo steps and to layer different effects and really play around with what you want to do with your photo. It's completely fully featured in terms of the different tools and filters, and if you're looking for an all-round, easy-to-use photo editing app, then Snapseed is definitely worth a try. Google Keep has been one of my favorite note-taking apps for a long time. I love that it's basically just a digital scrapbook that you can view from anywhere. And Google have recently updated it with some really nice features. My favorite amongst them is the ability to pin notes. This means you can have notes which are pinned to the top of your screen and will always be there. This is perfect if you've got to-do lists or shopping lists. As well as having different labels, you can color code all of your notes as well as using checkboxes, which makes this a perfect to-do list slash note-taking app slash general sort of scrapbook that is really, really useful day to day. Because it's baked into Google now, it's really useful for reminders and you can even set it to remind you of a certain thing when you get to a certain place. I spend a lot of my time walking and instead of listening to music, I've started listening to a lot of podcasts. And great podcasts need a great podcast app. And for me, Pocket Cast has been my favorite for quite a while. First of all, I love the fact that you just sign in with an account and all of your stuff is instantly there. It has a feature which allows you to skip forward by 30 seconds or skip back by 10. This is brilliant for podcasts as it allows you to navigate around a lot of the advertising. You can increase the playback speed, which is really useful if you want to get through a lot of content. 
You can also remove silence, which isn't relevant for a lot of podcasts, but if they're sort of slightly more amateurly produced, this will get rid of any sort of dark spots where no one is talking. And there's also a volume boost option, and you can apply these presets to single podcasts or to all of your podcasts at once. Next up we have Google Translate, and this is just a really useful app to have on you at all times. As well as doing live speech translation and text translation, it has a load of other cool, slightly more hidden features. One of my favorite features is live translation through the camera. This means you just point your phone at what you want to translate and it will display on your screen in whichever language you choose. The speech and text recognition works better than any other app I've tried. And it also has a really cool phrase book option which lets you save some of your most used phrases from around the world. And the last great feature of Google Translate is the system-wide translation. This means you can select any text in any app, go ahead and long press on it, and then you can quickly and easily translate it. The Pixel Launcher by Google is one of the best stock launchers that we've ever seen on an Android phone. However, I still think we can do a little bit better. And one of my personal favorite launchers for the Pixel is Action Launcher. This is really easy to set up and is one of the most powerful launchers you can use on your phone. And it allows you to have a lot of the features that make the Pixel Launcher great. So for example, you can have that swipe left feature to get straight to Google now. And you can have all of your apps accessible with a swipe up from the bottom of your dock. It also has quick actions, which will let you long press on an app and then you'll be able to jump into specific parts of that app with just a click. And you can even launch a widget from an app shortcut. So there you are guys, those are 10 of my favorite apps for the Google Pixel. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.